Hi everyone, and welcome to the very first episode of the Goals and Gratitude podcast. Uh, My name is Nicole Haney, and I am an online business coach. So this is my first podcast episode, like literally ever. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, I never thought that I would be making a podcast. Um, And so you might hear some background noise. I'm clearly in my home office. Um, You might hear my dog barking and there might be some clips that don't go the way that I had hoped they would go because this is all new to me. Um, But I thought I would just take this first episode as an opportunity to tell you a little bit more about who I am and my story so that you can kind of understand like where my experience is coming from. So on this show, I really want to talk to you guys a lot about building an online business for sure, definitely, but also about the mindset component to running a business. Because in my experience, this has been one of the biggest hurdles that I have had in being an entrepreneur is getting my mindset right and getting into the right headspace and getting out of my own way and overcoming my fear of failure and all of my imposter syndrome and like all of that stuff. So I'm going to be giving you some practical, like tangible tips on how you can start and grow your online business. Um, But also we're going to be talking a lot about mindset and personal growth as well. So just to dive into my story. So I've actually been an entrepreneur for like seven years now. Um, So I started my first business back in 2015. And up until that point in my life, I had really just lived my life by the traditional playbook, doing all of the things that you are supposed to do, right? So I went to university. um, I graduated with a degree in psychology. And I started out in an entry level job and I just started to like kind of climb the corporate ladder, right? So I started to get one job and then I got promoted to another job and then I moved to another organization and kind of so on and so forth, just really trying to build my career. But um, there was a turning point for me where I started to kind of realize like I had been in desk jobs for 10 years like a decade of my life, guys, sitting in these like beige cubicles with like a beige desk or a white desk and doing things like putting data into spreadsheets and literally just like mind numbing, soul crushing work, right? And and 10 years is a really long time to do that when you're not feeling super fulfilled with the work that you're doing. And so it just started to occur to me like, there has to be more to life than this, right? Like this can't literally be the next 25 years of my life while I count down the days until I can finally retire and do something that I actually care about, do something that I love, pour myself into something and like use the skill sets that I know that I have, but I'm just not being given the freedom to be able to use, right? And I didn't like being chained to a desk all day either. Like that was not my favorite thing. And so I started to look around for like, I got to change my life up. Like I got to do something different here. And so I started searching around for things. Now I am really into health and wellness. We might talk a little bit about health and wellness on this podcast as well, because it's really a huge part of my life. Um, So I am a runner, but please don't ask me what my time is. I'm not that kind of runner. I just do it for the fun of it. Honestly, like I don't I don't track my stats, nothing like that. But I just really enjoy running as a form of exercise. And um, so that's something that I do every single day. And I also eat a whole food diet. So I really am very keenly aware of my health and wellness and I also love dessert, which doesn't typically go hand in hand with a healthy lifestyle, right? So honestly, any dessert you can put in front of me, like cookies, cakes, cheesecake, like cheesecake is one of the best for me. I I love it. But really anything, like I love dessert. And so at the time, I'm still in this corporate job that I have. 
And I'm looking around for some sort of form of like healthy dessert, right? Because I want to be able to like eat something delicious after a meal as a dessert, but I also don't want to be consuming a ton of refined sugar all the time and like artificial additives and preservatives and stuff like that. So I was looking around for something and I couldn't find anything because like, honestly, that's a pretty tall order, right? Like a healthy dessert. So um, I decided to start creating my own. And so I just played around in my home kitchen. I am not a baker. I do not have any baking experience before this. Um, And so I just was making stuff for myself. Like it was a hobby for quite a while. I was making brownies and cookies and donuts and cupcakes and like everything. And so I just did this as a hobby for quite a while. And then eventually it turned into something that I thought this could potentially be a business. And so um, at the time, still in the corporate job, and I was going on this business trip and I was told it was going to be super busy, not a ton of time to like stop and snack and take breaks and stuff like that. Right. Um, So a girl's got a snack like I I eat all the time. And so I was like, I got to have some some grab and go snacks to bring with me on this business trip. And so I went to the grocery store and I like beelined it for the energy bar aisle. But I must have walked up and down that aisle like 50 times trying to find an energy bar that would fit the bill. And so I picked up all of these energy bars and I was flipping them over and I was reading the ingredients and I started to realize like all of these have refined sugar or artificial additives or preservatives or just something in it that I don't really want to be consuming. And so I ended up leaving the grocery store that day empty handed, super frustrated. Um, And I went home and I was like, I'm just going to make my own energy bar. I'm just doing it. And so I pulled open my pantry doors. I pulled out everything that I thought would taste good in an energy bar that I had literally on hand, um, mixed it up and just kind of hoped for the best. So I go on this business trip and I am like sneak eating these things out of Ziploc baggies out of my purse, right? Because it's not super cool to be eating this like thing from a Ziploc baggie on this professional business trip. And so I'm doing this and my friend who also is a colleague of mine, she's on this trip with me and she kind of calls me out on it. She's like, what, what is happening? What's going on over here? Like, what are you eating out of your purse? So I tell her I've made these energy bars. I think they're pretty good. Would you like to try one? So she tries it. She loves it. So we come back from this business trip. And of course, now all of my colleagues are asking me to make them these energy bars. So there I am in my home kitchen on a Saturday making like batch after batch after batch of these energy bars. And I start to realize I love this. Like, I love this. I love making food. I love like sharing it with other people. I love coming up with creative ideas for new recipes. Like this is so cool. This is the thing I've been waiting for. This is what I've been looking for. And so it took me about three months to build up the courage because like, guys, this does not happen overnight. Let me tell you. But it took me a while. And eventually I built up the courage, walked into my boss's office and handed in my resignation. And everybody thought I was nuts because I was leaving this like stable, secure, well-paying corporate job with, you know, vacation time and a pension and benefits and like all of the rest to start a health food bakery. And I had zero experience in the food industry. I was not a professional baker. As I mentioned, like I had no idea how to bake professionally. Like I was just doing it for myself. I did not have a business education. Like I had no idea what I was doing. And so people were like, you're crazy. Like, this is crazy. Like, what are you doing? But for me, I just knew that there had to be more to life than like sitting at a desk every single day doing the exact same thing and like just being bored out of my mind and never being able to like do things that I thought were like cool or interesting or fulfilling. And so really like I was terrified, right? And this is something that I do want to talk to you guys about on this podcast as well, like feeling the fear and doing it anyway. I was terrified. 
I, a lot of people think that because I had the courage to quit my job, that somehow I just don't feel that same fear that everybody else has about quitting their jobs and starting a business. And that's not true at all. I was terrified, but I just, the, the feeling of knowing that I needed something else in my life was overpowering. It was more powerful than the fear of what could happen if I quit my job. And also I kind of started to realize like, so like, so what if it doesn't work out, right? If it doesn't work out the worst case scenario, I go back to getting another office job and I'm just in the position that I'm currently in anyways. Right? So it didn't feel like there was a whole lot to lose in terms of that. And so I did it. I I jumped in and I started my health food bakery and it was so hard. It was guys, food businesses. If any of you listening have a food business, like, oh my God, food businesses are so, so hard. Um, but over the next like four and a half years or so, um, I actually had transitioned the bakery into an energy bar company. So it had started literally just as like a tiny health food bakery. I got a booth at a farmer's market, like a permanent booth that I could run all year round. So instead of opening a brick and mortar location, I actually opened kind of a brick and mortar location, but without so much risk at a farmer's market. And so I did that and then transitioned it into an energy bar company. And with the energy bar company, I was able to scale my business to a national level. So I was supplying about 300 retailers coast to coast across Canada um, and had a multiple six figure business. So it was hard, extremely hard. It was also extremely cool. Um, I had no idea what I was doing half the time. I felt like I was winging it. Tons of imposter syndrome, tons, because I'm just a normal person, right? Like I'm just a normal person that had a normal job. And now all of a sudden here I am with this like national business. And I'm like, people like me don't do this, right? I am not your standard, like, business person. I don't have an MBA. I didn't go to business school. Like I'm not some dude in a suit with slicked back hair. Like I just, a tons of imposter syndrome that I had to get over and eventually realize like I have busted my butt to be where I am right now. And I have earned the right to be in these rooms and having these conversations. So I go through all of that and I'm at this point where really cool things are starting to take shape. So I'm having negotiations with national distributors now. So I've gotten my product across Canada, sort of like on on my own with the help of a few partners and stuff like that. But um, now I'm starting to talk to national distributors, which we're going to take it from like where it was and really just start to explode it. I'm having conversations with brokers um, that want to get my product into Europe and want to purchase the product by the truckload, which was just wild to even be having those conversations. Um, And so I'm at this point and I go for coffee with a friend of mine and I'm telling her all of the cool things that are happening in this business. And she was like, oh, that's awesome. Like, so good for you. Like, I'm so happy for you. You've worked so hard for this. Like, she has known me for about 15 years. And she was just like, this is awesome. Like, you have worked your butt off for this. But she said, I I, I honestly am getting kind of a vibe from you here that you're not really happy. Like, what's going on? And I was like, no, no, of course I'm happy. Like everything's going great, like super successful. Like things are moving and grooving. Like this is amazing. And she was like, Nicole, like I've known you for so long and I know when you're not happy, like what's going on with you? And so I kind of just like brushed it off and I was like, no, things are great. They Like I'm happy. It's, it's all good. And it wasn't until after I went home and I left that conversation that I started to reflect on what she was saying. And I started to realize she's right. I'm not happy doing this because I had gotten into the food industry 
because of my love of food, right? I loved food. I loved making food. I love sharing it with other people and seeing the joy it brings into their lives. And I wasn't doing any of that anymore, right? So at the level I was at, I had a team of people that were producing the product for me. I was selling it to distributors or to retailers and they would sell it to the end user, right? They would sell it to the customer. And so I really wasn't having that customer interaction anymore either. And so I couldn't see that joy that people were getting from my products. My job had become managing the supply chain and negotiating with these brokers and these distributors um, and running a manufacturing facility. And none of that was what I wanted, right? So I had gotten into entrepreneurship in general, like the whole idea of starting a business was so that I could have freedom, right? I was sick of being chained to a desk all day long. I was sick of having to have a boss. I was sick of being told, here is the small box in which you can operate in. And these are the only things that you're allowed to do. Don't go outside of your box. I wanted to have the freedom to kind of be flexible and do what I wanted to do. I also wanted to have the freedom to travel the world. Anybody who's met me for more than two seconds knows how much I love Hawaii. It is my goal in my life to move to Hawaii. Like I want to have a house on the beach. It does not need to be a mansion. It can be a tiny little house. Like I don't even care if it's a studio apartment. Like as long as it is actually on the beach, like step out your front door, feet in the sand. That is my goal in life. I love Hawaii. And that was something that I really thought would be possible having a food business like, oh, I'm just going to, you know, make some food. I'll bring it to the farmer's market on the weekends. I'll live a super laid back lifestyle. And then as I transitioned into having a product that I was selling to retailers, I thought, cool, like I'll sell this to retailers. I can do that from anywhere. But that just really wasn't the reality of having a food business. You have to be there, especially because I had a manufacturing facility, right? Like I had to be on site overseeing that manufacturing facility. And so um, I really was not getting the freedom that I had been looking for. It was stressful all of the time. I was working 12 hour days. Like it just was not, it wasn't the right fit for me. And it wasn't what I had anticipated running a food business would be. And so, um, I decided that I was going to pivot out of the food space. And again, guys, like similar to the decision to quit my full-time job, this was not an easy choice. Like it took me quite a while. I, I agonized over this for maybe not months, but like weeks. I was thinking, thinking, thinking through this and just being like, this is not it. Like every single day I was getting up and doing things that I didn't really care that much about. And I just had lost the passion for it. And I realized it just wasn't what I had wanted. And so I decided to close the business. No, I did not sell it. I know everybody asks this question, but I think a lot of people don't really realize that selling a business, especially a business that's at that level, it's not the same thing as selling like a t-shirt, right? Like you're not like, hey, buy my t-shirt, it's 20 bucks. You're like, hey, can you buy my business? And here's the process that we're gonna go through and here's you know how we're gonna get paid out for it. Like there's so much that goes into it. And so um, I didn't wanna be involved in the business anymore and everyone I was having conversations with about selling it, they wanted me to stick around because I had become the face of this business. And so I was looking at another two or three years probably of being involved in this thing if I was to sell it. So I said, no dice, this is not what I'm looking for. And I decided to close the business. And what I did from there was I actually got a position um, advising businesses. So I became a business coach um, with a full-time desk job again, uh, as you do, right? And so um, I'm doing this and I'm starting to realize like, I love advising people on their businesses. Like this is cool because I can take what I learned from my experience in running my own business and I can help other people build their own, right? Like, and I can help people like live their dreams and become entrepreneurs. And like, how incredible is this and how fulfilling is this to be able to do this, right? 
And so I learned a ton from that job. And while I was in that job, I started a side hustle. And so that side hustle was helping specifically food entrepreneurs build their businesses. Because there is a lot of business advice out there, but there isn't a ton of industry specific business advice for food entrepreneurs. And so I thought like, how valuable is this that I now have this experience that I've built this business up to a certain level and I can come back and help these food entrepreneurs to do the same thing. And no, it wasn't a fit for me. It wasn't the right thing for me and for what I was looking for in my life. But other people love having food businesses and I can help them succeed at that. And so um, I started that side hustle and six months into picking that niche and launching the food business coaching, I was able to quit my full-time day job, which was insane, right? Like I never expected this to be my next thing. I never expected to be coaching people and advising people. And so I start doing this full time. I start telling food businesses like, here's how you can get your product from home bakery or like farmer's market level all the way through to working with national grocery store chains and really expanding your brand nationally and making that six figure revenue like I did. So I start doing this and I start to realize this is it. This is the freedom that I have been looking for. Like, I don't have to have a full time job. I now have an online business, which is so cool because having an online business means that I can do this from anywhere in the world. Right. Like if I want to go to Hawaii and record this message, I can do that from Hawaii. I can do that from anywhere, right? I can travel as often as I want. Like I don't have, you know, my two weeks vacation. I can take off whenever I want to. Um, I report only to myself. And so everything that I do is my own choice. Like it's the coolest business model ever. And as soon as I realized this, I cannot stop talking about it. I cannot stop talking about it because I just want everyone to know, like, if you are looking for freedom in your life, if you're looking for time freedom, right? Being able to work based on your own schedule and what works for you. If you're looking for location freedom and being able to work from anywhere in the world or take off on vacation, like literally whenever you want to. If you're looking for financial freedom, like, and having the money that you could have been making in a nine to five, but now you're making a ton more and you're doing it on your own terms. Like this is the business model for you. Like I honestly, and I know, I know guys that there's a lot of really, for lack of a better word, like spammy people out there that are like, I made $10,000 in two days. I didn't make $10,000 in two days. That is not, I am not here to to scam you or to lie to you. I am here to tell you 100% the honest truth that like this can give you financial freedom. It is hard work for sure. You do have to put in some time and you do have to build it up um, and you're not going to make a million dollars overnight. Like some people are trying to tell you that's not a thing. If somebody's trying to say that to you, please run very quickly in the opposite direction. Um, But you can earn a living. You can earn a very good living. You can earn more than you would probably make in a nine to five desk job Um, and you can do it on your own terms. So it's honestly just like like so cool. It's so cool. So that is my story. Like that's where I'm at right now. And somebody asked me recently, like if you had one message to tell people, what would it be? And it didn't take me very long to figure out what I would say. I would say my biggest message to people and something I really want to talk about on this podcast is the fact that you can do whatever you want to do in your life. Like you want to move to Hawaii, you can do that. You want to start an online business, you can do that. If you want to start selling t-shirts like at a stand at a farmer's market, like go and do that. You can do whatever you want. And I'm not saying that it's easy or it's simple. 
it is going to probably be hard. And there are going to be a lot of times where you are going to feel like you are failing so hard at everything you are trying to do. But honestly, like if you keep at it and you keep going and you keep trying and pivoting and adjusting and like learning from those failures, you will get it you will get it. You will figure out how to do the thing that you are trying to do and you will be able to do it. Like, honestly, it's just, it's such a cool concept. And I did not believe this until I actually did it. I am like the prime example of somebody that started a business that should not have worked. My business should not have worked. I did not have any baking experience. I had no experience in the food industry. I had never worked in a coffee shop. I had never worked in a restaurant, like literally zero food industry experience. I did not have a business education. I do not come from a wealthy background. That's something that sometimes people make an assumption about that is absolutely not the case at all. Um, I did not have investment for my business. Like I don't have rich friends or some sort of vast network when I started out. Like I really did this from the ground up as a normal human being with a normal amount of savings. And honestly, like if I could make this work, you can make your thing work too. You just have to figure out how to get it there. So I would say that's my biggest message to you guys is if you have a dream on your heart right now, if you have something that you are like, I have been wanting to do this for the last 10 years of my life. I have been thinking about doing this thing, like running a marathon, starting a business, like writing a book, what, whatever it is, it doesn't even matter. If you have a thing that you have been dreaming about, you can do this and you just need to figure out the steps in order to do it. So I would say that's a good note to end my first podcast episode on. Um, I am going to be releasing podcast episodes on a semi-regular basis. Hopefully it's it's fairly regular, um, but stay tuned for some more details. And again, tips and tricks on how to start an online business, how to grow an online business, and also a lot of mindset and personal growth to help you with that mindset portion of it as well. All right, guys, see you at the next episode.